This week on Fishing 411 TV, Mark and Jake Romanak are road tripping to one of their favorite spring walleye destinations. The Port Clinton, Ohio area of Lake Erie is special in the springtime because most of the walleye that call Lake Erie home spawn on the many shoals and reefs found in an area known as the Bass Islands. In the months of April and also May, visiting anglers can expect epic walleye fishing action. Not surprisingly, Mark and Jake do what they do best, finding and patterning walleye by trolling crankbaits, teamed up with snap weights and offshore tackle planer boards. For those who consider crankbaits and walleye fishing a way of life, it's hard to imagine a better spring destination than Port Clinton, Ohio. Dad, got one going on the middle board here. Go ahead and release that planer board and let it swing to the back of the boat. There we go. Now we're on Lake Erie today and it's that spring time frame. And uh, the, the whole focus of this week's show is we're going to talk about how to find walleyes, how to consistently catch walleyes on Lake Erie. The nice thing about it is Lake Erie has exploded as a fishery and so there are a lot of walleyes out here. Um, and it's easy to follow social media and think that you can do no wrong and just head out here and you're going to catch fish everywhere. But that's just simply not the case. Especially in the springtime, these walleyes are constantly moving and so where you caught them yesterday doesn't necessarily mean that those fish are going to be there the next day. And so today we're going to be mobile, we're going to look around and try to find a pot of fish and then figure out what it takes to catch these fish. Um, a lot of times when we film television shows, we come out here and pre-fish, and that's exactly what happened. As we caught fish yesterday, showed up to that spot this morning, and we just simply, those fish had moved. They're just not there anymore. And so we're going to find fish, and uh, we're going to get back on top of them, and we're going to be successful today. And we're going to take you for a ride to show you how it takes to catch fish out here on Lake Erie. Let's see if we can't uh, just keep them coming on. just like that. He's staying down, acting like the right thing, nice and heavy. Ten on the clicker oh, right now. We got color, like like the tuna guys say. We got color. It's a nice fish. Got him. There you go. That's a nice walleye right there. That is exactly what we're looking for. And today's all going to be about putting the pattern together. A lot of times when we shoot shows, the pattern's already been put together and we just have to put the show together. That's not the case today. We're going to be figuring out lead lengths, figuring out baits, figuring out what it takes to put a pile of these fish in the boat. Um, I'm very confident that today we'll get it done and we'll catch a pile of fish by the end of the day. So that is a good way to start off any day of fishing. 
This week's episode was filmed out of Port Clinton, Ohio on Lake Erie. If you're one of those people who's looking to master the crankbait trolling game for walleye, you really can't pick a better destination than Port Clinton. This is a great place to come to learn how to catch walleyes on crankbaits. Okay, so the time has come that I gotta set this back in the water and get it ready to go. And this particular setup came on what we call the 50 plus two method. And it's fishing a crankbait in combination with an offshore tackle snap weight. And so the way that I'm gonna set this rig and I'm basically going to put the crankbait, zero out my line counter, and start sending the bait out. When I get the bait 50 feet out, then I'm going to attach a snap weight. And in this case, I have a two ounce offshore tackle snap weight that I'm going to put on the line. In that particular setup, I caught the fish with a total lead length of 70 feet. Now the nice thing about it is the bait that I'm fishing can actually go 20 feet on its own. However, to get that bait 20 feet, I have to run like a 130, 140 foot lead, getting that lure further away from the boat. And so what I like to do by adding the snap weight, it shortens up that lead to 70 feet. I'm getting the exact same depth as if I were to put that lure a long ways behind the boat. And I found that with these shorter leads, you just simply lose less fish. The further that fish is away from the boat, the better chance that fish is going to get off before you ever get that fish to the boat. So I like to run these snap weights to shorten up these leads using the precision trolling 50 plus 2 method. Special considerations provided by Bill Lewis Lures. Special considerations are provided by Procure, ruthlessly effective bait sense. Here we go, Dad. Whoa! Got one cone on the outside. Interestingly yeah. enough, Jake, we got a double header going here. Really? That board yeah. just disappeared. Yep, so we'll all take them one at a time. Yours fired first, but uh, yeah, I'm, that's better save me a waypoint on this spot. There we go. It's very common when you're walleye trolling to find these fish in clusters like this, where you might go a little bit without a bite. But when you find a nice little pocket of them like that, you get two, you know, three fish on at a time. And I would say it's probably been 20, 30 minutes before we had since our last bite. But boom, you get a double on just like that. So that's really, that's really good. We'd save a waypoint on that spot. And then what we'll do is after we've caught these fish and we get up a little bit, we'll go ahead and make a turn and go right back over top of those same fish. String is like a, literally like a bowstring right now. Oh yeah. That's the one you want right there, Jake. That's a good there fish. Go. This fish is staying down really good, Dad. Ooh, about 10 feet thing. back, but about 10 feet down, I would say. Straight, straight down below <laughs> the boat. <laughs> Normally, that's a sign of a good fish. We'll Ooh, see. Oh, he's really dogging it now. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. He's a, a good fish. fish yeah. He is a good fish. Nice. There you go. Good job, kid. All right. And, uh, the thing with walleye fishing is often it happens on a Chinese fire drill. You go for a while, don't have any bites, and suddenly you got two. If you just keep a cool head about it, you can pull a fish, just keeping tension on him, um, without actually reeling that fish in, and nine times out of ten, you'll end up landing that fish. So there's no need to really rush. Um, just take your time and take them one at a time, and uh, with a little bit of luck, you'll uh, you'll get them all. And what I'll do is I'll take my own board off here because Jake's preoccupied on hooking his fish down there. That's no problem. I can reach up here and do that and uh, get him off. And this setup is a little different. I got a snap weight on here, so this one was a little bit deeper. Um, and so that snap weight's going to come up here in a second, and I can take that off. And if he lets me, there we go. He's not very happy. Snap weight's off, and I just put that in my pocket. And uh, now all I gotta do is just slow and steady this one. And, uh, Bakers, I'm curious, how, uh, how soon before you got a net open there, buddy? We are getting really close here. All right, no worry, I'll just go slow on him. All right, I think I'm ready for you, Dad. All right, cool. Well, we're under control here. He's about 15 back. Okay. Well, I can see him. There he is. Oh, yeah, nice fish there. Yeah, there you go. Perfect. Good fish. That is a good fish. And that's how you do a double header on Lake Erie. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, young man. I appreciate that.
You want to do some size comparison? I'm here? pretty sure if you put these fish on the on the tape, they'd be exactly the same. They're a good grade of fish. Yeah, they're cookie cutters, no question about it. And uh, lots of these to be had. You gotta love it. You absolutely gotta love it. You know, the beauty of trolling, especially with crankbaits, is that we have the technology. The technology to take our lures and put them precisely in the water column where we're marking fish. So we look at our sonar and we mark fish at a specific depth. We have the ability to be able to get our crankbaits right to those depths by using technology. Now there's only a couple of variables that control how deep a crankbait runs. Uh, lead length is one of those, how far you put it back. You know, the further you put a crankbait back, the deeper it's going to dive. And the other variable you have to pay attention to is line diameter. Thin lines, of course, let lures dive deeper, um, and thicker lines have more friction in the water, and they don't allow the lures to dive as deep. And the beauty of all this is all the hard work's already been done because the people at Precision Trolling, through the Precision Trolling data app, have tested all these crankbaits on various lead lengths and on all these different line types and line diameters and publish all that data. So all we really have to do, once we see fish on the graph at a depth we want to achieve, pull up the phone app, select the lure we want to use, um, look at our target depth, where we want to go, set our target depth to where we want that lure to go, and the app will spit out how much line that we have to let back in order to achieve that. It gets no easier. The only other way to go about this would be the old-fashioned way, which is trial and error. Set a bunch of different lead lengths and hope and pray that you get your lure into the strike zone. So you're wasting a lot of time if you don't use precision trolling. If you're anything like me, you don't have a lot of time to waste these days. And so by using the app, you can dial your lures into the strike zone immediately, catch fish faster, and catch fish more efficiently. Special considerations are provided by Precision Trolling Data and the Lake St. Clair Walleye Association. Special considerations provided by the Ultimate Sport Show Tour, Michigan's Elite Sport Shows. Eagle Claw presents the 411 on fishing. Hi, I'm Austin Mosier, and I want to talk to you guys about stinger hooks. So out here, uh, we're fishing the Columbia River, and I'm, uh, we are using stinger hooks because if those fish are light biting and they come up to bite that bait, if they only get the tail of this jig, they're not going to get that hook. So by having that stinger hook right out the back there, um, it, it gives you a little bit of added insurance for that bite. Ideally when I'm tying up these stinger hooks, I run a number two uh, single hook with a uh, 15 pound fluorocarbon for my leader. It's a short length of line and so I like to use heavier uh, leader material there just so that they don't break off. And the reason why I'm using a single hook here is because we have a pretty snaggy bottom. So um, treble hooks will work, but you're gonna have more uh, snags on the bottom and you're gonna have less time fishing. So it's all about uh, keeping them in the water and fishing effectively and hooking those light biting fish that's one way that you can be more effective. All right, now let's see, I think I might have one on the snap weight rod. Oh yeah, he's still there. He's still there. I saw that fish bite actually a little bit ago, but we're just trying to get everything figured out. And I said, you know what? I'm just gonna leave that, that fish sitting there. One of the things when you're trolling is you gotta remember you're, you're moving forward, so you got tension on that fish. You don't necessarily have to get there right away. So sometimes it's easier just to let that fish hang than it is to make even more of a disaster at the back of the boat. Yeah, you don't want too many at the back of the boat at the same time. Okay, oh yeah, that feels good. You say you got snap weight on this one? Yeah, too? Dad, it's gonna come pretty quick too. So this is our, uh, our 50 plus two method. But it's a fairly short lead from, from the snap weight. All right, I got now you. Now another 50 feet to the fish and we'll be good to go. He wants the other side of the boat, don't he? Ooh, yeah, look yeah, at that's that. A nice that fish. is a good fish. That is a good fish. A little closer. Oh, yes. Yeah. Beautiful fish. Ain't nothing wrong with that one. We take those all day long. In fact, we have taken those all day long. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> Let's show that one off. That is a good Lake Erie walleye right there. You know, the time frame that we're, we're fishing right now is early May. So what you have are these fish that, you still have some fish spawning, but for the most part here in the month of May, these fish are done spawning. They've dropped off these reef complexes and now they're out in the deeper water suspended. 
And let me tell you one thing, when a walleye is done spawning, they get hungry. And that's why we come out here and troll crankbaits on Lake Erie in the spring. We're targeting these fish. Now this fish right here is a really healthy fish that spawned quite a while ago. You can see how clean that fish is. She's done her thing and, uh, and she's back putting the feed bag on. And that is why we're out here pulling crankbaits on Lake Erie to put our hands on a bunch of these fish. Pretty easy to tell when you got a fish on an offshore board when that flag goes down and that board comes back. Oh man, that gets your heart pounding. Let's get on this one. That is cool when that happens. That is cool. The reason why I snapped that rod, I'm not setting the hook. What I did is I just released my board. And in doing so, what I did is I pulled the line out of the front clip on the planer board. But the planer board's still attached. It's attached by that second release on the back, that red release, it's called the OR-16. So now what I'm doing is I'm reeling in the planer board, but the planer board is not planing anymore, and so it's real easy to be able to reel in the fish and the planer board at the same time. If you don't release your boards, you have to fight the board and the fish at the same time, and that just is not a good idea. So now I got the board up here, and, uh, and Jake's gonna give me a little assistance. He's gonna clip it off, and you can see how it's just attached to the back. Now, I can continue to fight the fish, and Jake, I gotta bother you again, buddy. I got a snap weight on here, so we got another piece of paraphernalia that has to come off. There you go. There we go, Dad. Off comes the snap weight, and now it's just me and the fish. So I can continue to fight it and, uh, and uh, get the fish here at, into the boat here pretty quickly. This, again, is that 50 plus two method. So the crankbait and the snap weight were 50 foot apart. And then I add a little bit more lead light down uh, to get that fish a little bit deeper. He's right on the surface here, Jake. Oh, that's oh, a man. nice fish, Dad. That is a good fish. Keep him coming. I'll see if I can't get him up here for you. Nice. Perfect. We have got the virtual grade of fish. Almost every fish is identical. And uh, when they're coming under this clear water, they look a little bit bigger maybe than they are. But, uh, but these are quality fish, 22 to 24 inch fish all day long. You gotta love that. Lake Erie, Port Clinton, one of my favorite places on earth. Special considerations are provided by Cisco Fishing Systems and Striker Brands. Go early, go late, go prepared. Special considerations provided by Fishhawk Electronics and Daiwa Corporation. Okay, now it's time to hook up our planer board to send this out to the side. What I have right here is an offshore tackle planer board, and there's a right side and there's a left side, so you want to make sure you're grabbing the right board for the right side of the boat. But in this case, I'm going to take my monofilament line, and I'm going to put some twists in the line. And what that does is we were talking about releasing the planer boards. That allows the, the planer board to release from that front clip easier just by putting that twist in the line. Then what I'm going to do is I'm going to hook up my OR16 release at the back, there's a pin in this style of release, and so the, what you want is the line behind the pin. That way when that board releases, it stays hooked to the pin. But in this case, we're talking about the tattle flag, and the tattle flag is a really nice design to help you see when you have bites. The key to this is you gotta leave a little bit of slack from that front release to the back release to allow that flag to actuate. Now I'm gonna turn this around here so you can see it. Basically, it's a metal arm with a spring, and when that fish bites and pulls on this line, he pulls that flag down. Down. And so if you have those light bites when we're trolling slow, maybe it's a little bit smaller fish that you have, you can see those light bites, you can see those fish that are a little bit smaller, and make sure that you're not dragging fish. So the tattle flag works really well for allowing us to detect those light bite fish. One of the other refinements that you can do with your crankbait fishing is you can add scent products to your crankbaits to make them more enticing. What we're trying to do is create a scent stream in the water. Now a crankbait looks good enough to eat, we want it to smell good enough to eat as well. If you're a walleye guy in Lake Erie, you're going to find that, uh, make sure I get the right one here, gizzard shad is one you're going to want to lean on because there's an awful lot of gizzard shad in this system and, uh, and gizzard shad is a common forage base that these fish are going to concentrate on. So we use an awful lot of gizzard shad, it works real well here on Erie. The other one um, if you're looking for one that's more of a catch-all that works in a lot of bodies of water, and that would be trophy walleye. And what trophy walleye is, is a mixture of different kinds of minnows uh, all into one formula. So trophy walleye is a general good scent choice for any body of water. But here on Lake Erie, in my opinion, you just can't beat the gizzard shad. It works the best. And what makes these so good is they actually are made from real bait fish. So that scent stream you're putting in the water doesn't smell like anise, doesn't smell like garlic. It smells like fish. And fish eat fish. Poke here, catch you more walleyes, no question about it. The snap weights have definitely gotten hot here as of late. No question about that. And that's just a depth thing. The beauty of the snap weight is it allows you to fish a crankbait deeper. 
but you don't have to let a lot of line out to achieve it. And um, as you spend more time trolling, you're going to come to this conclusion. The further away that a bait gets from the boat, the more difficult it is to land that fish. You've got to reel it further. You give that fish more opportunity to come unbuckled. So we like to keep our leads as short as possible. And for me personally, I don't want a crankbait any further back than 100 feet. And so if a crankbait has to go further back than that to achieve the depth I'm looking at, that's when I start thinking about adding a snap weight and uh, to get to the depth without having to exceed uh, that 100 foot maximum on the lead length. Right here, this particular one is 70 feet, 50 feet to the snap weight, and then another 20 feet. Yeah, that's a good fish right there. Yeah, nice fish, Dad. That's like a nice the plan one. comes together. Yeah, check this thing out. Beautiful looking fish. <laughs> Beautiful. You know the water's cold when you look at the pro here on the bait. You know all this kind of jelly on there. Uh, you can tell the water's cold. There's no doubt about it. Springtime is cold water fishing, but it's also good times fishing. Got one going on this middle board now, Dad. Nice fish. It's starting. The wind's starting to pick up a little bit. You would almost think it's springtime on Lake Erie right now, Dad. We started with glass calm, almost <laughs> sunny and warm. At one point, I thought about taking my coat off. But then the wind's picked up out of the north, and it's starting to cool back off again. So, you know, it seems like the weather changes uh, a lot here. If you don't like it, just wait 10 minutes. The weather's going to change. But the fish are biting. And I guess that's all that matters right now, Dad. That looks good. That does look good. Swung around and caught him a little funny. That was a good Whoa. Oh, yeah. That's a good way to do it right yeah. there. That right there is another really good Lake Erie walleye. We have caught a pile of fish today this size, and they didn't come easy. So don't be afraid to move around and try to get right back on top of a new school of fish to be successful. Hey, my name is Jake Romanek, and you've been watching Fishing 4 on 1. We'll see you here same time, same place next week. Closed captioning is provided by Lakeside Motorsports, Michigan's premier marine and power sports company. Fishing 411 is brought to you by Offshore Tackle, Lorenz Electronics, Starcraft Marine, Yamaha Outboards, Yakima Bait Company, Niagara Falls, USA, Smooth Moves, Bill Lewis Lures, and Jay's Sporting Goods. Oh yeah. Cookie cutter fish today. There we go.